In this video, I want to talk about one of the most important and basic ideas in the find element method, the strong form versus the weak form. This concept is really at the heart of how the find element method works. If you understand it well, it will help you a lot as you move forward and learn more advanced steps in find element analysis. Also, knowing the difference between strong and weak forms helps you connect the math behind the method to how you actually use it in practice. So, what is the strong form? Basically, the strong form means the differential equation of the problem along with the boundary conditions. To explain this better, let's look at a simple example, the behavior of a one-dimensional rod. The equation that governs the rod is shown here, where fx is the applied load on the rod. Since it is a 1D problem, the domain is a line, we call it omega, and x goes from 0 to L, where L is the length of the rod. So we need two boundary conditions, one at the beginning, or x equal to 0, and one at the end, or x equal to L. For example, we might have a prescribed displacement at x equal to 0, like u0 is u sub 0. And at x equal to L, we can have a prescribed force, which is usually given by the stress or internal force at that point. Before we talk about how to find the weak form, we need to understand the types of boundary conditions. There are two main types, essential boundary conditions, or EBCs, and natural boundary conditions, or NBCs. Essential boundary conditions are also called geometric, kinematic, or displacement boundary conditions. In more technical terms, they are known as Dirichlet conditions. These conditions are directly applied to the solution. For example, if we fix one end of a rod, we might say the displacement, or u, is zero at that point. Similar to the thing that we have shown here. That is an essential boundary condition. The second type is natural boundary condition, also called non-essential boundary condition or in technical terms, a Newman condition. These conditions are not directly imposed. Instead, they are automatically satisfied as part of solving the equation. A good example is a stress at a free boundary, which is zero. So, why do we call it implicitly satisfied? Because stress depends on a strain, and a strain is derivative of displacement or the primary variable. So in this example, the natural boundary condition involves a derivative of the main unknown variable, which is u. To explain the steps for finding the weak form, let's use a simple example, a prismatic rod, like the one shown in this figure. The rod has length L, a constant cross-sectional area of A, and it's fixed at the left end. At the right end, a force P is applied. The strong form of this problem includes the governing differential equation along with two boundary conditions. An essential boundary condition at the left end, or x equal to 0, which is u0 is 0, and it is an EBC, and the natural boundary condition at the right end, Ea du over dx at x equal to L is equal to P. Here, du over dx is the strain, and when we multiply it by Ea, we get the force at the point we are interested in, in this case, x equal to L. Now let's go through the steps to find the weak form for this simple problem. Step 1 is to multiply the differential equation by a weight function, which we call Wx, and integrate it over the entire domain, from x equal to 0 to x equal to L. So we take the equation, multiply it by Wx, and integrate over the domain omega. This gives us an integral form of the original equation. The next step is to apply integration by parts, or IBP. If you remember, integration by parts follows this rule. Integral of W dV equals WV minus integral of V dW. In our case, we can apply this rule by treating minus Ea 
du over dx as one part of the expression. Let's call that R V. When we when we perform integration by parts, we'll end up with the new expression shown here. Just be careful when applying integration by parts, you need to evaluate the boundary terms at x equal to 0 and x equal to L, which are the limits of the domain. The third step in finding the weak form is to apply the boundary conditions. At the left end, x equal to 0, we have an essential boundary condition, u is 0. Since we already know the exact value of the solution at this point, there is no need to approximate it. This means the weighting function wx must also be 0 at x equal to 0. So we say w0 is 0. Now let's go back to the expression we got from the integration by parts. At x equal to l, we have a boundary term wl times ea du over dx at x equal to l and from the strong form we know that ea du over dx is equal to p or basically the applied force at x equal to 0 we also get a term w0 times ea du over dx at x equal to 0 we don't know the value of this term but we do know that w0 is 0. So this whole term cancels out. When we apply these conditions to the result of the integration by parts, we arrive at the final weak form shown here. This is the weak form of our problem. Now that we have found the weak form, let's take a moment to compare it with the strong form and see the key differences between the two. First, the weak form is written in integral form. And the natural boundary condition, or NBC, appears inside the equation. This is the NBC, and this is the integral form. In contrast, the strong form is a differential equation form, as shown here, and the boundary conditions are applied separately. Second, the way the equations are satisfied is different. The strong form must be satisfied at every single point in the domain. That means it requires an exact solution. The weak form only needs to be satisfied in an average sense over the whole domain because of the integration. It doesn't need to be exact at every point. Another important difference is the smoothness requirement. The strong form involves second derivatives like here d2u over dx2 which means the solution needs to be very smooth. The weak form only involves first derivatives like du over dx and dw over dx so it allows for less smoothness in the solution. And this is actually where the name weak form comes from. It's called weak because it relaxes the requirements for higher order derivatives. Because of that, and because of its integral structure, the weak form is much more suitable for approximate methods like Galerkin's method and finite element method.